Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to talk through an example manometer problem and uh, how we would measure the pressure within a system using a manometer. So let's read through this example together. Um, the liquid in the manometer is mercury with a density of 13,593 kilograms per meter cubed, which is open to air at atmospheric pressure. If we'll, if we'll recall, atmospheric pressure is about 101.3 kilopascals. What is the pressure of the gas in the tank? The gas density is 1.13 kilograms per cubic meter. Engage in absolute pressure. If H is 10 centimeters, H bar is 3 centimeters, and H double prime is 8 centimeters. Excuse me, that's the H prime down there. Okay, so this is a great time to pause the video and work through this example yourself if you'd like. Otherwise, we'll just talk through how you would solve this problem. So my first step here is I'm going to define three points in my manometer. I'll call this point one. Down here, this will be point two. Over here, this is going to be point three. Let's talk a little bit about the pressure at each of these points. So at P1, point one, we're at the top of the mercury, which is open to the atmosphere. It's only air on top. So our pressure at P1 is going to be equal to atmospheric pressure. It's going to be equal to P0, which is um, 101.3 kPa. Now we come down through the mercury, and when we when we go down in the mercury, we know that the pressure at point 2 is going to be greater than the pressure at point 1. Right now, the important thing to see here is is what's the pressure difference going to be between point three and point two, kind of through this U bend. So we've got this height H prime here, but the interesting thing is that since we have mercury below point three and point two, there's actually no pressure difference between the two points. Okay. So you're in the same fluid between point 0.2 and point 0.3, and you're at the same height, so the pressures are actually equal. So we'll write that up here, P2 equals P3. So that means we can essentially ignore the section of the manometer down below point 0.2 and point 0.3, that whole H prime area. We're going to ignore that for this problem, for pretty much any manometer problem. The important thing is going to be finding this pressure difference here. I'll just talk to P. That's going to be the important part. So if we recall our equation for pressure difference due to hydrostatic pressure, the equation looks like this. P2 equals P1 plus rho G H. Okay, come down here. I want to be really explicit with units here. So P2 equals 101.3 kilopascals plus 13.593 kilograms per meter cubed times 9.8. meters per second squared times 0.1 meters of height. Okay, when we multiply these three terms here, these units are going to come out to pascals. So, we need to convert either the kilopascals to pascals or the pascals to kilopascals. Either way, but for simplicity, let's let's convert this one to, to pascals. So this is going to equal 101.325 pascals. And then let's add those together. So if we do 101,325 
plus 13,593 times 9.8 times 0.1. That gives us a final pressure P2. Write it on the second board here. P2 equals 114.646 pascals, which is equal to 114.6 kPa. And remember, this is in absolute pressure. Since we were treating P1 as having a pressure of 101.3 kPa. Okay, so that is also going to be equal to our P3 over here. Now, the final step in this is um, finding the pressure in the tank. Now, there is some gas between 0.3 and the tank, and there is a height there. So let's determine what the pressure difference is between this height and 0.3 here with the density of the gas. So let's call this PG equals P3 plus rho GH. So we're going to do this all in Pascals again. So 114, 646 plus the density of the gas, if we recall, we'll go back, is 1.13 kilograms per meter cubed. So 1.13 times 9.8. And H plus H double bar is going to be 18 centimeters. So it's going to be 0.18 for our height. So if we do that calculation, 114, 646 plus 1.13 times 9.8 times 0.18, that gives us a final pressure in the tank of 114,648 pascals. Okay, so what we see there is P3 for our purposes is approximately equal to the pressure in the tank. The difference in pressure because of the height of the gas is very minimal. So if you're working a problem that looks like this, you can usually neglect the pressure change due to the gas um, in the second half of that manometer. So our final answers here, and gauge and absolute pressure. So an absolute can be this answer right here, 114.6 kilopascals and PG gauge is going to be that minus atmospheric pressure, right? So we'll do 114,648 minus 101,325 pascals. That gives us a final gauge pressure of 13.3 kilopascals. Great, so that should give you an idea of kind of how to walk through a manometer type problem. Um, if you have any questions or if you'd like to see a more complex manometer example, please leave a comment, let me know. Um, feel free to leave any questions that you have in the comments. Um, otherwise, happy studying.